So what was the role of the F-16 with the Norwegian Air Force? So initially, it was an air defense uh, fighter, right? You know, intercept to take over the role from the uh, the starfighter, basically uh, to guard the north against the uh, Russians. And so Norway only had heat-seeking missiles, same nine Limas in the beginning. It wasn't until like mid um, uh, late nineties that we got the Amram, and in two thousand we got the midlife upgrade program with the rest of the EPAF countries which transforms the airplane. Um, and then you got the introduction with the uh, uh, laser guided bombs and everything. Mm. So then the whole role changed a little bit into, was then became very popular, the multi-role, multi-role role. And um, so then we started training a lot more into air to ground and also the, the, the cooperation with special forces and, uh, and, um, and uh, forward air controllers on the ground. So, all, this all changed with the you know the conflicts on the Balkan and everything. So we just had to um, go with the flow, really. Um, and the F-16 was just a perfect airplane for doing both. You could just jettison the bombs, and you're a full-up 9G fighter, which is incredible. And, and and between you know hands-on throttle and stick hold test stuff, you know it was just right there. It was so intuitive, and uh, and uh, still some of the best ones around, I think. So can you talk us through some of your flying training uh, on the F-16? Yeah, so it's um, the, the time in Tucson is very much uh, fairly basic. We, we did up to 2v2 training there, some air to ground, and they have some fantastic ranges and very experienced uh, instructors. So, yeah. so the basic training is sort of second to none, uh, fantastic. And then, but what you don't get is, uh, you know, the, the di <coughs> dynamic weather and, and uh, snow and ice and all that stuff as you, you get in Norway. So, so you come home and then they do a transition program for, um, you know, about half a year or so. Okay. Um, obviously, then we had the drag shoot uh, on the Norwegian yes, F-16s. Yes. And, you know, you'd be flying around in, in the winter, you had to de-ice the aircraft sometimes, and which was huge contrast to um, to Tucson and y you know you rarely flew an instrument approach only because you had to and it was on the program but in Norway this was you know pretty much a standard stuff and and having really really short days you were uh, often in the dark especially up up north oh yeah so was the Norway uh, the F-16 uh, su suited for the Norwegian climate yeah absolutely I think um, you know, our engineers were brilliant and, and learned very quickly to work with the airplane, but it's, it's been served, you know, the, the Norwegian Air Force very, very well. Um, you know, we had a few loss due to, uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's a single engine, you know, in, if you in, ingest of, you know, a 10 pound seagull, you know, it is, it is uh, difficult for the engine to handle. So we, you know, we lost a few, but uh, overall, I think it was very well suited to, to to the role, both Mark II airplane, you know, for intercepts and everything, and also then to adapt into the swing role. Uh, it did very, very well. And did you ever uh, reach Mark II in the F-16? I did, yeah. Oh wow! Yeah, Mark um, 2.02, <laughs> uh, and it was uh, it was a 2.05 limit. Wow. So it was obviously a goal on that day to, to do it. I had to do um, a ferry flight uh, from, uh, from uh, Trondheim down to, to the uh, airbase. And uh, yeah, I, I managed to do it, you know, listening to some of the pilots, well, how do you make the most of it? And uh, yeah, just a uh, porpoise just underneath the tropopause and I got there in the end. I almost ran out of fuel. <laughs> So, <laughs> so it was close to calling me in fuel in the end, which wasn't part of the plan at all. But wow. you know, the, the fuel flow is is uh, astonishing. You know, William Ford burner at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so it's uh, yeah, you know, you're looking at sixty thousand pounds an hour. You know.